Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to a new episode of Signs of Prophethood. This is your host, Omar Khalid. We're going to talk about the night journey. Of course, the night journey at the time of the Prophet is a sign that he's a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, before this, we'd like to uh, welcome Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ibrahim. Thank you so much, Sheikh Ibrahim. A very important topic. And about the night journey, of course, we know that it's divided into parts. The first one, is the journey from Mecca to Palestine to Masjid al-Aqsa. And the second part of it is going to the heavens. And we're going to talk about some of the details, but before this, we would like to know about the beginning uh, of this as a sign of prophethood. Was it a dream, as some people claim, or was it a physical journey? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> This journey of al-Isra, which is going to Jerusalem, from Mecca to Jerusalem, and to go up into the heavens, to the mm -hmm. seventh heaven, mm -hmm. by the Prophet والسلام, it was done with consensus, mm -hmm. body and soul, uh, and not a dream, mm -hmm. not just the soul. Otherwise, what's the miraculous thing of it? So the Prophet والسلام, was taken physically <laughs> from Mecca to Baytul Maqdis, and he led the, uh, the prophets of Allah in salah, mm -hmm. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him to the seventh heaven. And that's what the verses of the Quran talks about it and the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, and uh, being a miraculous thing mm -hmm. even though it's a matter of unseen. Part of it is what the Prophet والسلام, said to the people of what's between Mecca and Jerusalem at that night mm -hmm. or, you know of the caravans and so on and people had uh, to, uh, to speak about this and to establish this uh, truthfulness in it. Mm -hmm. But there's another level that many people don't think of it. Mm. Which is what the Prophet ﷺ said about the unseen. <laughs> really, when people read the Quran <laughs> and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that talks about the unseen, <laughs> if you compare this to uh, fake prophets, <laughs> when they talk about the unseen, <laughs> they talk about foolish things. Yes. The unseen that is mentioned in the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, fits perfectly <laughs> to what we are doing physically in matters of the deen <laughs> and what we're ordered to do. <laughs> So uh, what the Prophet ﷺ talked about seeing the Prophets of Allah. And what the Prophets of Allah, they uh, said to the Prophet ﷺ like Musa salam, And what the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the salah uh, for the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And how this is such an important thing for the, for the salah. Mm -hmm. And the significance of it being 50 mm. first and then it went down to 5. So that the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, they understand oh, that this is their life is about the salah. It's the most important thing. Mm. And it become five in actions, but 50 in rewards by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet saw the so Jannah and saw the hellfire. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this is in place of what is being mentioned throughout the entire message of the Prophet وسلم, and relating the actions to the hereafter and to the matters of unseen and so on. And again, as with, with matters of unseen, it would never go against one's intellect. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond, yes, people cannot comprehend this because they've never seen it. Subhan That's why it's called unseen. But it's not contradicting to the basics of one's intellect. Subhanallah. So when the unbelievers, when they heard about when the Prophet ﷺ said that he went in this night journey, um, is it correct that they only knew the first part? They didn't even hear about the second part or they heard about it, but they didn't uh, even like see it. They, they said like even the basic thing, the first part is not true. Right. cannot happen, like we cannot go to Jerusalem. Right, because this is mm -hmm. something that is abnormal to them. And compare this to what Abu Bakr he said, he immediately, no hesitation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He said that he believes them in Khabar Sama, when the revelation comes from the heavens, which is further far more than what happened to the Prophet والسلام, So how can he not believe him in this? SubhanAllah. So what about like if we take the, can, can we, like when he answered his believers, can we take this approach by telling them, uh, at that time of the Prophet وسلم, going from a city to another, uh, like you say, well, at that time it takes months and so on or weeks. But at our time, it's understandable. Like if you take a, an airplane, if you say this to pe other people at the time of the Prophet, they would say, well, what's an airplane? It cannot happen, something hanging in the sky. So even the, the man-made stuff, the human things that are made up, the, the, if you ask maybe hundreds of years or 100 years ago, they're going to say, well, that's foolishness, that's not true. And even about the, the second part, uh, like right. uh, going also up to the sky and so on, they say like you can go like a speed of light and so on and the black holes and they make up like these theories and so on. They believe them, but when you tell them that the miraculous thing about the Prophet, they say, no, 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 we don't believe in this, but they believe other things that are like spooky and... Right. <laughs> Which is an evidence clearly that not everything that is beyond your capacity of understanding mm -hmm. 
is uh, illogic. Mm -hmm. the, this is, these are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Things beyond the capacity of our understanding, this is understandable. We do not understand many things in our life. We mm -hmm. don't even understand how our soul working with our body. Subhanallah. People even, which is very amazing, and I've heard it from more than one mm -hmm. uh, professional doctors and so on, the definition of death, that yes, moment of death, is not really clear. Yes. When that person died now, when it's in front of us, <laughs> right? So many things in our life, we do not comprehend it in a sense. We don't say that it's illogical because it's already happening. Yes. So therefore, that's what the ulama they mentioned about the deen of Islam. You mm -hmm. would never find anything in the deen of Islam that goes against one's intellect and the basic logic of mm -hmm. how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. But things beyond our capacity of comprehension, that's a normal thing. SubhanAllah. Because we're limited. We can say it like, I heard also this, Sheikh Ibrahim, about like when they try to see the anatomy of the brain. So they, they studied the part of which is related to seeing. So they found out that seeing, you have like certain parts, one is responsible for how far can you know this thing is from you and the shape and the color. Every like thing has like a part like corresponding with it. But there is no part in the brain that like combines all of these things together, the color, the, the furtherness of the, the object and so on. So the, the answers of this that you cannot even explain everything in a materialistic way. Like right. they don't have an answer to this. How can a human being understand what's in front of his own eyes even when they see the anatomy of the brain? Right, but at the same time, mm -hmm. we have basic fitrah, which is whether people call it logic or fitrah, mm -hmm. that you cannot contradict this. That every single person on the face of earth mm -hmm. would relate to this. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. for everything that is present, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, someone that created it. Mm -hmm. So the subject of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth. This is something that is undoubtful whatsoever, mm -hmm. except for those who are arrogant. Mm -hmm. The burden of proof is actually on them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing with even matters of unseen. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense that human beings would live their life mm -hmm. worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowing the unseen. The unseen has to be given some ideas of what the unseen is. Mm. And how would the human beings know the unseen? or some of it, there's something called unseen. Yes. We all agree there's unseen. Mm -hmm. So don't we need to know some of the unseen, mm -hmm. especially when there's a purpose of life? Mm -hmm. This is where the prophets of Allah, they conveyed this to the people. So, so. so when it's conveyed to the people, this is absolutely logic mm -hmm. because there's something called unseen. Mm -hmm. So how can a person deny this because they don't see it with still believing there's something called unseen? Mm. It doesn't make sense. They're the ones that are contradicting themselves. But the perfect sense is there's something called unseen and we get to know some of the unseen by the revelation from Allah. And subhanAllah, even, even when we, the description of Jannah, the paradise, we, like, there are names that we see, like the, the right. names of the fruits and so on. And some of the, the companions, they explain this by saying they're only the names. Right. But the, there are difference in taste, of course, and something completely different. But to relate to this, even when we, like, see the, the attributes of Allah. And some people, they say, well, how can we believe that God has an eye or, or so on? Well, the point is that this is like f you because you're limited. So that's why you see the senses in a very limited way. It must be physical and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is how even everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mm -hmm. for our livelihood matters. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to remind us mm -hmm. of the hereafter. Remind mm -hmm. us of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always have things has to be, when a person enjoys something in this life, mm -hmm. he should remember the enjoyment in, in Jannah. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in this way, mm -hmm. in this life that we enjoy certain things. We have pain. So that a person would take this as an evidence. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, you know, when, when the warning comes, mm -hmm. you know, you understand what pain is, mm -hmm. but it's going to be severe pain if a person mm -hmm. disobeys Allah. So this is how people learn. If a child, a lion comes to a child that doesn't have, uh, you know, much intellect, he might play with it, thinking oh. that this is just a, a normal thing, that animal that he can play with. Mm -hmm. But he sees that his father fears mm -hmm. the lion and take precautions, so he learned from this. So this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have these things in place so that people would see what they are in need of so that they would fulfill the purpose of their mm -hmm. life. The way that the trees grows and how the winter time things becomes dormant and so on. Life and death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran. So that people would take from this as an evidence there is life after death. Very beautiful. So what about Sheikh Ibrahim? Like in, in the night journey when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi went to the heavens and so on there, there was an incident that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, may Allah may peace and blessing be upon him, he showed the, the Prophet two uh, cups, one cup of milk and one cup of wine. 
And he, something happened after this, and Angel Gab Gabriel said something. We want yeah. to learn about it. The Prophet ﷺ was given a choice to drink from a cup of milk mm -hmm. or a cup of wine. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ chose the cup of milk. Mm -hmm. So Jibreel Ayy Salam said to him, Hudita ila al fitra. That means you were guided to the fitra, mm -hmm. to the pure nature. Mm -hmm. uh, this clearly shows that this is the religion of al fitra. Mm -hmm. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam uh, to be the final messenger of Allah and to honor the followers of the Prophet وسلم, that this religion is about the fitra, the nature, mm -hmm. the pure nature of the human beings, that nobody can ever oppose it unless they're being arrogant and stubborn and, and so on. Oh. And the significance of having the choice, even though wine is, pr mm -hmm. is forbidden, but it to bring this meaning, you know, and how the Prophet ﷺ, his That's actions, right. his speech, fits every single human being, and That's not cool. the, the desires or necessarily that opposes one's fitr, one's nature. That's right. Very beautiful, Sheikh So we're going to talk about also the universality of the message of Islam and what symbolizes this in this journey, but after a short break, inshallah. So dear brothers and sisters, we're going to meet after the break. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters, to Signs of Prophethood. We're talking about the night journey with Sheikh Ibrahim Zidin. So Sheikh Ibrahim, we're talking about the universality of the message of Islam and how this is symbolized in this journey. So we'd like to know more about that. The Prophet ﷺ in this journey, he met many of the Prophets of Allah mm -hmm. and he led them in the Salah, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically to show that the message of the Prophet ﷺ is uh, going hand uh, in hand with the message of all of the Prophets of Allah. He's mm -hmm. the final messenger of Allah. He's the best of all of the messengers of Allah. And all of the work of the messengers of Allah in the history of mankind is going to be fulfilled in a perfect way. So as if this is, this is the end of their journey. They're mm -hmm. all one family. As the Prophet والسلام, he said that the Anbiya are ikhwatul li'alla. They are all brothers with mm -hmm. different mothers and so on. So they all came sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all have, you know, when people have the same job, mm -hmm. they always have, uh, they relate to one another. They feel more of bonds between them. And that's why they have the same culture. They have the same way. And they would have even certain groups and associations and unions and so on. So they feel for one another. Mm -hmm. Prophets of Allah are the same. They are the best of all of the human beings. Oh. So the Prophet ﷺ met with them. Oh. And uh, the, to show that this message is one message from the very beginning to the end. It's not more than one message. It's one message. Mm -hmm. The one that sent them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only oh. one, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So why human beings are differing among themselves? Oh. They need to follow and believe in all of the messengers of Allah. And whoever believed in a messenger of Allah, why disbelieve in another messenger mm -hmm. of Allah? Mm -hmm. Believe in all of them, follow their teachings, which is the final one is the Prophet والسلام, that all of the beautiful teachings that were before is established in his message and more mm -hmm. that people would need for the end of life. Uh, and this is something beautifully established with actions and the dialogue between the Prophet والسلام, and mm -hmm. Musa and Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam, and, and this, is, uh, this is the beauty of it. So, be before talking in details about what happened in these discussions and conversation between Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and other prophets, did he meet them like physically? That they are really like their or their souls? Now, this is a subject where the, it's not really clear in the hadith mm -hmm. of the Prophet mm -hmm. sallallahu uh, but the Prophet sallallahu he was physically present, yes. and he met them, mm -hmm. and he talked to them, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But mm. we know that mm. Isa alayhi salam, he's the only one that is raised physically mm -hmm. uh, with his body. Mm -hmm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. That's why we leave this matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'd like to know the discussion that happened between uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Prophet Musa. Now, uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was coming down after he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he reached the level that no Prophet have reached, mm. which is Siddharat al-Muntah, عندها جنة المأوى, where the last position, where the, the, the Jannah uh, is there. Mm. And uh, beyond this is the hijab or the seal uh, of light, where, uh, which is between the creation of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ reached this level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the Prophet ﷺ. Mm. And when he was asked, والسلام, did he see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, Nurun anna ara, which means light, how can I see him? That means he saw light. 
Uh, and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the Prophet and mm -hmm. gave him the direct orders to establish the Salah, which shows the honor and the importance of the Salah in the life of a Muslim. Mm -hmm. That came directly, not through Jibreel alayhi salam. And it was established 50 times a day. Wow. And the Prophet وسلم, took that, and even in the Surah Al-Najm and others were, uh, the Prophet وسلم, described his way, that he was someone in that position, seeing things that no other human being ever seen. Usually if you go to a place like a palace, for example, that you're amazed with, you keep on looking <laughs> back, you know, up and down and you're so amazed by what you're seeing. The Prophet ﷺ was not like this. Mm. That means he was, for, you know, with humbleness, being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was the manners of the Prophet والسلام, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he was coming down, uh, after taking the message and the order, 50 salah a day, 50 prayers a day, then he met Musa alayhi salam. That he met him when he was going up and when he was going down, Musa alayhi salam asked him, mm. Uh, how many? He said 50 times salah. He said, your ummah, your people would not be able to fulfill oh. this. Go back and ask for relief. So he went back and he asked for relief and he would pr put down uh, some. And then he kept going back and forth till oh. it reached five. Every time he would come down, Musa a.s. would say to him that your people won't be able to sustain that, ask for relief. Till it was five and Musa a.s. said, tell him so the same oh. thing. He said, I'm shy from my Lord. Mm. Uh, to go back again. Mm -hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made the decree already that it's going to be five. Subhan but it's something for us to learn great benefits from this. Mm -hmm. And at the end when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it's uh, five in actions, khamsun fil awan, khamsuna fil ajr, 50 in rewards. Subhan we choose the, that this ummah is a blessed one. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon this ummah that is the least in all of the nations in actions mm -hmm. and the most of it in reward. But also this fact that this is going back and forth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but one of the greatest benefits of this is to really put things in the right perspective. Mm. This is the purpose of our life. This is the main job of the day of a Muslim. It's after the Tawheed and the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to establish the Salah. So imagine it was 50 and I always mention this because it was 50 in the beginning. That means what? 24 hours divided by 50. Yeah. That means almost every half an hour there's a Salah. Every half an hour. If this is the case, people would not go to work, they would barely eat maybe, mm -hmm. right? And they would not have the life that we live in today. Mm -hmm. And if it was to be like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for them accordingly because He's the one that created them and He would order them to worship Him uh, in such a way. And that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve from us to worship Him like this and even more. So when it's become only five, would there any excuse then valid for someone to say, I don't have time to do the obligatory salah. This is by itself exposes the arrogance, the weakness, mm -hmm. the ignorance. When someone would say, I don't have time to fulfill the five mm -hmm. obligatory salah. That your life, then you don't understand your life. You're not created to earn and to work. This is not your goal. These are all means. So remember the 50 mm -hmm. times a day that you, you pray and then by the time you go outside the masjid, you have to come back again. But this is not the case. Mm. So therefore, we put the five daily salah. This is the goal of our day. This is the goal of our life. And everything else to serve this goal. SubhanAllah. And, and alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Mm -hmm. The rest of the entire day, you have the time to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And only in these short times that we're ordered to fulfill the salah, how evil in, and unjust are the human beings when they do not fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah Shaykh, I mean like the, the prayer came from above and it's a very strong connection. And the, the Muslim himself or the Muslimah, they need this and actually like one of the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu he said something close to the meaning of that, that the, the, he was very happy with prayer. When prayer comes, he doesn't feel it's a burden. Right. We, we sometimes we feel this, but it's actually, it's going to relieve you from so much pain, you can pray to Allah, you can ask Him about everything that you want. That's why also for those who are mm -hmm. concerned, usually for people when they watch these types of programs, they are religious, they are concerned about the deen, they make their prayers and so on. Mm -hmm. Great benefit to learn from this is that we need to give more importance to our salah, mm -hmm. to pray in the masjid for men, for the women to give the time and the devotion, mm -hmm. to make that, this is the most important thing in our life. Mm -hmm. How long does the salah take when mm -hmm. it comes to the time of one particular salah? Mm -hmm. uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. What is that compared to the rest of the day? Yes. Where are the Muslims when it comes to the Fajr Salah? When a person says, I overslept. Once, maybe every so long, yeah. uh, overpowered, that's fine. But every day, 
You know, this is a very sad scene throughout the Muslim world. When it's time for Fajr, everybody is like the disbelievers are asleep. And when it's time for work, everybody's going to work. This is now, and after that, we get to ask why the situations of Muslims are, are like this today. Why are we treated this way? It's our own actions. So that's why this is such a, a great lesson for all of us. Mm -hmm. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in such a way that this is our life and everything else is to serve this. SubhanAllah. So what about Sheikh Ibrahim, the, the symbolism of choosing Jerusalem and the Masjid al-Aqsa, the mosque in Jerusalem for this journey for yeah. the Muslims? Uh, this is the third, uh, this is the Ula al-Qiblatin. This is the first of the Qibla that Muslims faced for 17 months. SubhanAllah. 17 months they were facing this in their Salah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them face Mecca. So this is uh, part of uh, the deen of Islam. Mm. Uh, this is one of the three masajid when uh, we are ordered to uh, travel to the masjid. Uh -huh. It is not permissible for a Muslim to travel to a specific masjid on the face of earth, believing that there is some virtue in mm. traveling to it, except these three masajid. The Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, and Al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Mm. So if a person travels to it, if a person is able to do so, for the sake of just praying there, it's a virtuous deed, uh, which is, of course, shows the responsibility of us as Muslims. That how can a Muslim relax and enjoy and so on when uh, his his first qibla, one of the three masajid that is part of his deen, uh, he's not able to uh, pray in it, and it's mm -hmm. uh, the the rights of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala not fulfilled so towards it. Then what should people do? They <laughs> should repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. <laughs> And hold fast to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's lost when we turned away from the orders of Allah mm -hmm. and neglected our salah yes. and our duties towards the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Sheikh Ibrahim. Very happy Allah. to see you and we hope that we see you again, inshallah, very soon. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. We hope that you see us again in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.